Okay, boss. I stand amazed Good morning. Good morning, everybody. You look great today. <laughs> Thanks for joining us online. And uh, we miss you. We love you. Can't wait to uh, be back with you uh, in person. But for now, we're just going to enjoy time of worship today. We pray that you're enjoying being with your family and friends. Uh, so we're going to sing some songs of worship today uh, because we, we do have a couple different types of worship. We have a, a traditional worship and we have a contemporary worship. We've been enjoying blending those two into one service where we all come together and we praise and worship the Lord. So we're going to start off with a couple hymns today by being amazed at the presence of the Lord. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene.
we're talking about the love of Jesus. And the, the great thing about Jesus is that he has rescued us and ransomed us from our sins. And we are no longer slaves to that sin, no longer slaves to that fear. This is one of our new songs we've been doing in the last few months since we've been separated from one another. And I pray this morning that it is a blessing to you and to your family as you worship the Lord and sing these truths. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me. Mother's food, you have. 
with us this morning. Take out your Bibles and get ready for our time in the Word today. Hey, great to have you with us at your homes via Facebook Live, and it's great to have about 20 cars out in the parking lot this morning. Um, if there's ever a time in the coming weeks where you feel like you just want to get out of the house, you're welcome to come to the parking lot. There's a lot of room out there, and uh, Turn it on to 88.3, and you're good to go. Let's open up with a word of prayer today, and we will get started. Father, uh, 
We do this little two-week series now talking about your great love. And uh, today we're going to talk about that we need to rely on that love. With what we have been going through, Father, uh, individually, as, as a town, community, state, country, world, we all need to rely on that love. And uh, we pray for the people that are in the midst of COVID-19, people recovering from it, people that are dealing with it, people that are in the hospital right now that have a fever and other symptoms, but it's not COVID-19, and they're having a hard time figuring out what it is. And, and, and we lift those folks up. We, we lift up everybody in this great time. And Father, this message today is geared to allow us to remember we have to rely on your love. It's in your son's name we pray, amen. I had this great little opening thing, and then the more I thought about it the last 24 hours, God's like, talk about the love you've seen in the world in the last six weeks. And you know, there is a lot of love in the world. Um, I see it here on a daily basis. I see it as ladies are making masks, and they bring them here. I see it as people come in, and they're so grateful to have a mask, to take it, to wear it, to give it to family members, nurses coming in and just overjoyed that they can take them to their coworkers and, and, and they've got it in just the love of this church. I've seen it in the love of people donating food to our food pantry. Our food pantry looks like a little grocery store right now. And, and we give all that props to you folks and, and, and watching people from this church go deliver food to people that needs it. Um, on other scales, I've loved watching the little videos of the amazing grandfather who uh, showed a lot of love to his grandchildren by taking a drone, attaching Dunkin' Donuts to it, and flying it to his kids. Um, seeing the great love of people, families walking up to nursing homes and just waving at the window of their loved ones. And, and just telling them, hey, we care about you, we miss you, we love you. The seniors, whether it's college, whether it's high school, the men and women who has been their whole dream to walk across the stage and the love that the schools, I mean, I know Malvern and Carrollton, I've heard about their plans and, and to see how they're going to love their kids and, and uh, still give them a chance to walk across the stage, get their diploma, and, and all the hard work that's been in there because they love those kids. And to see pictures this past week of, of Melbourne teachers going to every senior's yard and putting a sign in their front yard and then standing at a distance and talking to that senior. That, that is what this time is about because so many people aren't feeling loved. So many people are getting frustrated with all this and and I, I know you've got to be. I, I see that a little bit in our parking lot today, which is great because people just want back out, but we got to live by the rules of the land and, and, and just the frustration. So we have to show a little bit of the love. We've got to realize that God is in this with us. And, and he tells us over and over again, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. And I'm always going to be there with you. We're going to look at how we need to rely on that love in 1 John 4, 15 today. We're going to look at some passages starting in verse 15 and dropping down. We're going to be in a New Living Translation today. Let's take a look at verse 15 to kick this off. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. So how do you rely on that love? Well, first you've got to declare that you know Jesus, that you've got Jesus. How do you rely on it? you got to know that you got him. Rely, rely on the love by declaring, I got Jesus. You, you can't be afraid to go out into the world and say, hey, I got him. He's mine. And it's just not a word or a phrase. You have to live it. I can't stop thinking about the old milk commercials. You remember those. They've been around forever. Got milk? I love the saying, and even somebody got creative and made a Jesus t-shirt that says, got Jesus. Because to rely on that love that we're going to talk about today, you got to declare that you know him. you got to declare that you love him. you got to declare that you got him. And you just don't do it with the words. You do it with your actions. You do it with the way you live, with the choices that you make. 
and you declare it, you live by it. It, it is, he is the number one thing in your life. He is, the other great analogy is the uh, Ferris wheel. And the center spoke is Jesus. And every chair going off, every seat going off is a part of your life. And he has to be in every part of it. Because if you, if you don't, then how does anybody know that you have him, that you got him? So if you're going to be able to rely on the love of Jesus, you got to have Jesus. Verse 16, these amazing words John writes. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. We rely on love by trusting how much God loves you. We have been taught since we were little kids by singing a certain song, Jesus Loves Me. I hope that song is still sang in junior churches. I hope it is still sang in Sunday school classes. I know we get carried away with the new songs and the upbeat songs. But I'll tell you what song taught me that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. We sang it every Sunday morning in the basement of that little Methodist church in Nashville, Ohio. And I would leave with the thought and understanding that Jesus loves me. And you have to trust that. And I'm sure right now there's a lot of people not trusting that. Because we're walking around going, why, why can't God stop this? Why can't Jesus stop this? I, I saw a little thing on Facebook today that uh, the month of May, they're calling it, some folks wanted to call the miracle month. Well, you know, that, that's all great. And I would love for this thing to disappear just like that. And God could do that if God wanted to. But I think sometimes the miracle happens when we learn things through things. When we learn things. And one of the biggest things you need to learn when you go through a time of crisis in your life is to rely on the love that Jesus gives you by trusting him. By trusting him. You, you have to understand that he will get you through every painful thing in your life if you learn to rely on that great love and rely on trusting him to get you through those moments. Rely on love by knowing God is in you and you are in him. That big thought scares me. Because the way I live, if God is in me, then that's the way I better live. We're taught through scripture that when you are baptized, the gift of the Holy Spirit from God and from Jesus comes and lives inside of you. Acts 2.38. So if that happens, and it does happen, and when that happens, this thought scares me because am I living the way God wants me to and he's in me? Why do I ignore it? Why do I not live it? Why do I not rely on his love? Why is it the days that I've been a little depressed in the last seven to eight weeks because we can't get out and live like we could? We can't worship like we have been. Why, why, if I'm relying on his love and knowing that God is living in me, then why am I having those moments? Why am I getting depressed? Why am I feeling down? Why am I letting it drive me crazy? Why am I venting to Amy about, well, if they're so smart, why can't they find a cure? And, and all this stuff. Because if I got him in me, then I need to be doing what? Living the way he would live in this moment. In this moment. And, and living that way and understanding, you know what? He is in me. He is here. He's inside of me. When I gave my life to him, it's not about living about for me anymore. And, and I'm really starting to understand that. It's not about living the way I want to live. And I, that is so hard. When, when the Bible talks about submitting to Jesus, submitting to God, that is the moment we understand what submission is when we stop trying to make everything our way drives me a little crazy because I think the reason why marriages collapse, friendships collapse, 
churches collapse, leadership falls apart, because we don't understand that. God lives in me. And I need to submit to that. It's not always about my idea, my thought process. It better be my way or the highway. No. We are so harsh on people because we think our way is the best. And God is screaming out of us. The Holy Spirit is screaming out of us. It's not about your way. It's about my way. It's about living the way because I'm in you. You've accepted me. You believed in me. You were tired and weary. And as Eugene Peterson says in Matthew 11, verse 29, Jesus says, come to me. And he paraphrases it this way. So I can teach you the rhythms of grace. I just love that analogy. The rhythms of my grace. So if he's in me, he's my rhythm. He's my beat. He's the way I need to live. So if you're going to rely on that love, you need never forget that he is in you. In you, verse 17. Maybe the most famous one out of these verses. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. I love this. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. But we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. My goodness, there are some amazing things in verse 17. Rely on love so it will let your love grow more perfect. More perfect. Do you understand that we're supposed to become a perfect product for Jesus? Do you understand that it is Jesus' goal on earth that everybody who believes in him will strive every day to be perfect? Perfect. You know, my golf game is not the greatest. But about two weeks ago, I had one of those great moments. You just know it when you contact the ball. And I don't have many moments like this anymore. 30 years ago, I did. But I pulled out a six iron on a par three out of Great Trail, number 12. You got to hit it across the water. And once I hit it, I went, that felt pretty good. I might have just had a perfect swing, which doesn't happen often. And I watched that ball land two feet below the hole, trickle up the hill a bit, and it started coming back. And I looked at John Doninger, I said, John, it's got a chance, John. It's got a chance. Now, it was two feet from being a hole in one. But all I could think about was when I got in the golf cart and drove up to the hole, is Jesus says, that's what I want out of you every day, a moment of perfection. I told you, I think differently than most people. I'm not going to be perfect every day because I'm human or human and I'm sinful in my sinful nature. But every day I have to have moments where I connect with Jesus in a way that it feels good. Good. And it is a perfect moment. So if you start creating perfect moments, they will start connecting throughout the day and we start relying on that great love that wants us to grow in to perfection. It drives me nuts when people says, well, I can never be perfect. Then why is verse 17 in the Bible? What makes us perfect? Not ourselves. What makes us perfect? What makes us perfect is relying on the great love that is inside of us. Jesus. Relying on that great, great Love And when you rely on it, it builds an amazing confidence. It starts to change you from the inside out, and you start to walk with a little swagger. And what do I call swag? Sw saved with amazing grace. And when you start it, it's not this cocky confidence. It is this confidence that only Jesus can give. You're not afraid to walk in up to somebody in their moment of need and say, hey, can I pray with you right now? You're not afraid to go outside and declare to people that are struggling that, hey, I know Jesus. Why don't you get to know him? You start living out, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Because you start getting this amazing confidence. And I see it in the kingdom right now. 
I am so proud of so many preaching brothers, whether it's a friend of mine that I met in college by the name of Doug Martin, who's down in Kentucky, and what his church is doing through this time, whether it's a guy named Kenny White, who's outside of Cincinnati, Ohio at the crossing, whether it's the minister that got me pointed in the right direction, Don Kelly at Kirkpatrick, whether it's a guy named Dean Blythe over at Hope Tale that every day is trying to give people a moment of hope. So many more. A friend by the name of Bruce Hawkins out in Indiana that, that every day he's on Facebook preaching and, and giving his people a moment. And I can go on and on and on and on and on with so many churches stepping up to the plate, doing things digitally, reaching out to their community, making sure their people's got what they need. And and there has been a confidence that has come out of so many of us right now. Not a confidence in ourselves, but a confidence in Jesus. And, and, and I'll bring it down home to my staff. I can't say enough for Don doing his worship Wednesdays. And if he misses just one, oh, people let him know it. And, and it doesn't matter if it's Mark Black and all the podcasts that he is doing so people will still get Sunday school. And Kevin... My goodness, Kevin has got so many Zoom meetings with kids, and they all want to see Mrs. Barb. Mrs. Barb's got to leave sweeping and, and go see her kids on Zoom meetings. And Brandon, and, and right now he's doing an amazing lesson series about being a hero, about your origin. And it's not about Superman and Batman. It's about Jesus and you. And, and, and the thing is, so many of us, and it's that confidence of Jesus that needs to come out and and I can't help but think of another Gatorade commercial. Or another commercial by Gatorade. Be like Mike. Be like Mike. Drink a Gatorade, you may play like Michael Jordan. Well, I know you won't. But accept Jesus Christ, and every day you're going to become like him. That's who you need to be like. Listen to verse 18. Such love has no fear. Because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. His perfect love. Rely on God's love to push the fear out. To push the fear out of you. You have fear right now. You have fear that we're never going to go back to what we used to call normal. You have fear to go out of your house because you believe that you could get the virus. You have uh, this cocky fear that, hey, fear you have right now. You got to rely on love to push that fear out. You know, it, it was funny. One of the big fears of my life has always been a fear of heights. I'm still not good on ladders, and you would think that when I went my junior and senior year in high school and I at Tri Rivers Career Center and I was in a building trade class and, and one of the jobs I interviewed for right out of um, high school, my senior year, I was interviewed by a company that uh, fixed church steeples. Isn't that funny? And um, one of the jobs, the main job, would be climbing up on top of the steeple. And uh, I realized I needed to be inside the building, not on top of the steeple. And, but then I went to college, and my fear of heights got conquered a bit. It con conquered at a place called Grayson Lake. My first week there, some guy said, hey, you want to go cliff jumping? And I became addicted. I don't know what happened. Maybe I grew up a bit. But we jumped off on cliffs that was about 80 feet high. And I just ran, and I just jumped. And then my sophomore year, that spring, I got hired by Sandusky, First Christian Church of Sandusky. And what is in Sandusky, Cedar Point? What was one of my big instruments to get to know kids? Well, they all had passes to Cedar Point, so the church bought me one. What's that, Cedar Point? Roller coasters. At that time, the biggest and the baddest was the Magnum. Through my fear of heights, you know, it, it was easier jumping off a cliff because you could just run and jump and then think about it. The roller coaster, though, you stand in line and think about it. And I remember, though, 
for me to connect with these kids, they all wanted to ride what? The Magnum. My fear got pushed out. Now, I know that was a physical fear, but when you live for Jesus, when you live for God, fears start to be pushed out. And when you rely on that love, fear starts to be pushed out. And, and I don't know what you're fearful of right now. There is so much. Maybe you're out of a job and, and you're not getting unemployment yet. Maybe your relationship, you're, you're spending more time with your spouse and some fears about the marriage is popping up. Maybe your kids and it's going crazy. I don't know what your fear is. Can I ask you something today? Rely on the greatest love there is, God's love, and let that fear be pushed out. Here is Kenny Thomas's only fear these days. I wrote about it the other day in a Facebook devotional. My only fear is standing in front of my Lord and Savior and not hearing the words, well done, good and faithful servant. That is my only fear. It's my fear for me, fear for my kids, fear for people in my church. That's my only fear. But for that fear to be pushed out, I just need to go live for Jesus every day. I don't have the fear of the virus. I don't have the fear of what tomorrow can hold. I have a fear, a righteous fear of standing in front of the one that I want to live with forever, forever. First John four nineteen, we love each other because he loved us first. Rely on love and show love because he loved you first. Here, here is the big time thing. You are called to go love people. You are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he loved you first. He loved you first. But what happens to us is we get so caught up in the vortex of this world that we start to believe in what this world teaches. Love yourself. Think about yourself first. Now, that's not what Jesus teaches us. Jesus says, rely and show love because he loved you first. He first loved you. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he did what? Sent his only begotten son for who? For you. So you would believe and have eternal life and not perish. So if he loves you first, what do you need to do? You need to go show people the love of Jesus Christ. You need to go love on people every day and their fears and, and their really bad moments. You need to go love people. I want to end with this little story. It was 1898, and Ben had left uh, the East eight years ago to head out west in hopes of making his fortune. And while he wasn't rich, he had accumulated over 300 acres of good land and built a comfortable farmhouse on it. And he raised wheat, corn, and all his vegetables. And he had managed to build his herd of cattle to over 200 head. Having accomplished all of this in only eight years, he decided that it was now time. The ad that he placed in the New York newspaper said, wanted a good woman, Willing to be a pen pal. Marriage is a possibility for the right woman. Could you imagine writing that today somewhere? Before long, he began receiving letters from Molly. Their correspondence soon turned into a love for each other. And now he stood in the Kansas City train station waiting to finally meet her. And when the train arrived, there were a lot of women getting off. Suddenly he yelled, Molly, over here. She looked his way, walked over to him, smiled, held out her hand. He took it for a moment, then let it go, and she said, how did you know who I was? He then reached 
into the back pocket of his overalls and said, from these letters, but there are no pictures in them. He dropped his head a bit and said, oh yes, there are. There are lots of pictures in your words. You see, you would spend hours. He had spent hours reading every word, looking for every little clue that will tell him who Molly really was. He had fallen in love with her words, words that painted her portrait. God's precious words paint a vivid portrait of who he is. We, as his bride, should fall in love with his word so that we can t- then fall in love with its author. Here's the reality of the day. I want you to fall in love with Jesus. And to do that, you have to rely on him. And if you're already falling in love with Jesus, then you need to rely on him every day. This past uh, Tuesday, I got to baptize somebody that I met through coaching football last year. Uh, His name is Billy Dawson. And I can't wait for the whole church to get to know Billy. And if you saw the amazing pictures on Facebook, uh, Billy adjusted my back after I baptized him by hugging me like he did. And um, Billy's a good man. And this Tuesday, we get to baptize two more people. So if you want to fall in love with Jesus, you don't have to wait on a Sunday morning when church is back to come be baptized. Just call. I put a devotional out on Facebook today. If you get a chance, read it. If you want to talk, just call. Facebook me, text me, just call because I want you to fall in love with Jesus. To believe, to repent, to confess, to be baptized, forgiveness of sins, gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray this morning and then we will enter into communion. Father, we just come today praising you. I thank you for your great love, God. I can't tell you how much that great love means to us, Father. Father, I I pray for people at home, people in the parking lot who uh, need to rely on that great love. And sometimes our first step is by giving our life to that great love and then letting that great love live inside of us and then relying on it every day. Father, I pray for the folks that have been listening today that are struggling, they're living in fear. This pandemic is is just really getting to them. And I pray that they will rely on your great love to get through it, God. Father, as we enter communion now, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds. Allow us to take a moment and really focus on the great love. It's in your son's great name we pray. Amen. If you got one of these, you can get it open at this time. Or if you do it like I do it at this time, pick up the bread. Let's take a moment to think on that great love and then partake. time will sake the juice that represents his blood that was spilled shed for you and I poured out for you and I his great love in action let's take a moment to partake much. This church loves you very much. Rely on the great love of God this week.
today. We love you. If you need uh, to have us uh, pray for you or do anything for you, just let us know. Contact the church office. We love you. We'll see you later.